The questions that were submitted as part of the registration for this, we had a number that were focused around experienced flippers and their, ex their interpretations of the, what they do, their challenges and their general experiences. So we've put three up on the board and we have a group of experienced flippers with us. So we've got Graham, we've got Gary who's a modeling instructions, your focus, EK as well with modeling instruction, and Lachlan McGuinness who flipper and Mary Stone contributor, which is fantastic. Alrighty, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask each question to each of our people. We'll go one question and then response. One sentence each is your challenge, okay? You've met it. <laughs> Three commas maximum. How well have students related to videos featuring, featuring an instructor who is not their physical teacher? Graham, we'll start with you. I'll come over here. Yep. Um, Overall, I guess I'd say reasonably well. I find teenagers to be a bit judgy, so sometimes they have very positive or negative feelings about certain presenters, and they either really love that topic or they can't wait for the next topic. Well, um, <laughs> that's my time. But overall, yeah, I think they pretty well. Yeah. Fantastic. Gary? In general, slightly less well. Depends on the presenter. There's a real skill to doing it. Perfect. Uh, Three my <laughs> My students certainly prefer the videos that I make. A pause is okay. <laughs> I want to be um, the last of this. <laughs> I think it might have a lot to do with how the way I present my videos link very, very closely to how I talk about concepts in class. So it's it's really wedded together. Perfect. Lucky. So uh, my experience is a little bit different to EK's. I've noticed that it doesn't really make that much difference. So the other comment I'd just throw on is the weird side effect that I've had is because I have done some of the videos is that I've had students that I've never met before from other schools come up to me and say, hey, you're the guy in our videos. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know, they're kind of excited to meet me from that point of view, but um, <laughs> yeah. I'd, the other, I don't have problems. I think that the things I see from between different presenters is bigger than whether or not it's me who's the presenter. So I think it is a little bit presenter whether or not they like a particular presenter, <coughs> but I don't think it matters whether or not it's me. So, Could yeah. I add in something? Yes, Insia, I'll come over with the mic. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to say, I think the students like the variety of presenters from topic to topic. And the fact that they know that these presenters are in Canberra, either from teachers from other Canberra colleges or from uh, ANU. And sometimes they come back and tell me that, you know, the teacher in there, I saw them somewhere out there. <laughs> and so that connection and that connection to an educational institution, especially for students who want to go to universities, it's really important. So they kind of like it. Alrighty, question number two. Does flipping and interactive learning really make you have a better use of class time? We'll start with Graham again. Try and keep it short. Uh, yes, but it depends on the day. I guess sometimes every kid's watched the video. Sometimes none of the kids have watched the video if they had an assignment due. So it's very dependent on the day. Gary? Um, yes, it did, but it totally changed the way I taught. And I had got into modelling instruction, so I had to rethink how I taught. And this, this was a big part of it. Perfect. EK? Yes. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Catching up with the comments. <laughs> Lovely. I'd also say yes, but it depends on what you actually do with the class time that you make available. I think if you, you could do things that would not actually make it not more effective. So it depends more on what you do with the class than the fact that you have just flipped. Perfect. It's like I've planted him for the final stage. <laughs> and Can I add something again? Of course. <laughs> Because um, I watched uh, Gary teach as well as EK, and I just want to say the way they use their class time is so active. Like they do uh, call something called whiteboards uh, <coughs> speed dating, I think, or speedboarding, I think, <laughs> in which um, they've got whiteboards uh, all over the room, and students, a group of students, start on a question, but they don't get to finish it. So the stopwatch rings, and then they move over, and they're working on other people's work, um, and the modeling instruction activities that you guys do. So every time students are linking back to the activity and the concepts they learned. So it provides time. The flipping is actually providing time uh, for the students to do that. So you guys do it really well, I think. Alrighty, and finally, what are some unexpected outcomes from implementing flipped learning? Let's go the other way. Lockie. Okay, I guess uh, the one that I didn't expect is that I feel like now I have a lot better, I spend a lot more time 
talking to students individually and I have a much better picture of what they understand and don't understand, whereas before I feel like I wasn't as in touch. Okay. Yeah, I, I totally along those lines. I Since I started doing this flipping and the modelling instruction and how the flipping allowed me to use my class time differently, I love, I, like I love going to school, I love working with students, I love those aha moments that I see, you know, every day, it's great, it's fantastic. Perfect. Yep. Gary? Yes, along the same lines. <laughs> so I, I found I had to really read up on how to be a teacher in terms of facilitating quality small group discussions with students because I didn't know how to do that mm -hmm. and that's been a real revelation and that was, that was a big surprise. Perfect. Uh, yeah, I guess I'd agree with everyone as well um, in terms of the quality of the discussions you have with kids, but also interesting tangential topics like structures at universities because they're getting so many different presenters from so many different places. They start to ask questions they hadn't thought of, like what sort of specialties they are in science and especially in physics, and it really helps them sort of start thinking about their careers after school as well. Nancy, you have any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, thank you, Experience Flippers. I will ask that you divide yourselves amongst the tables. 